a pleasant good afternoon, Royals fans. We did it. We advanced. We were on as the Royals won thanks to Jacob Prizzer's patience is a virtues. Wrist shot, goal, waiting for the screen to get in front, as he said in the post-game interview. Check that out on the Royals YouTube that Matt Knob and I asked the questions for in the post-game interview. Also, please need to subscribe down below or up above these huge widgets to keep us growing to the goal of 250 or more by the beginning of June. But let's get right into it. Tomas Ebbing's line was key again. His line had the goals in both games. In Game 5 to win the final game up in Portland, Maine, Tomas Ebbing from Brendan Sonier, who was the healthy scratch tonight, got the assist. Now, don't look at healthy scratches for this team like it's a knock or anything, because I don't think it really is. I think this team just has, <clears throat> and I asked Kirk McDonald about this in the post-game presser, and he more just touched on highlighting how great Cooper and Shen did, which is what I... Which is exactly what I wanted him to do because both of those guys stepped in. Shen had a game-saving play, uh, being able to block it for Nagel when you had that weird stanchion bounce that Pat Nagel described in the post-game presser as well. And then Cooper had a brilliant play, uh, which actually started the whole Donnybrook uh, the, on the ice, that he was able to get down the ice, create plays on tic-tac-toe passing, and then... Of course, the whole Donnybrook started. He also seemed to have his great skating legs all night as he was continuing to progress and create chances. So did Kenny Hosinger. It was a night for the Hosingers as Cam scored a hat-trick for the Wheeling Nailers. And Kenny had a fantastic game drawing a penalty and then somehow, while getting knocked down, having a perfect pinpoint pass to Trevor Gooch to get off of his stick in about a nanosecond so he could score. This series, I think, was perfect for the Royals to build character. The one thing I saw a little bit differently than Coach in the beginning was uh, the outchanced were 20-5 to five in the first two. I felt like in the first, they started off great. Then Maine had a good middle push, and then they ended great. So maybe that's what got the chance total high for the Royals. But I do think they didn't have the sexiest overall first. I had thought they had a good first two minutes. Maine kind of controlled the middle. Then they drew that power play. And then after that, Maine didn't control anything really until their push part of the third period, and the Royals had much better control of play. The only time I saw that I didn't necessarily see, I think, as good in the positive direction, I guess, as Kurt McDonald was the whole entire first period. I saw a great start, a little bit of a snag in the middle, and then a great finish that continued through the second period, and then into the third period where, as Kurt McDonald says, of course you're going to have a push uh, late from these teams. It's the postseason. You pull the goalie. You see it even, this is me adding this part, but you see this even at the NHL level, where teams have massive pushes, one of the goalies pulled at the end, and you're hanging home by your heart strings, your, your heart's beating a million miles a minute, because you're nervous as heck. But Pat Nagel was huge in this game, coming back there, and he's a star of the game. Uh, he might have let one in he wants back, but then he was brilliant otherwise, and the team stepped up around him. That stanchion play is something that's going to happen zero times <laughs> elsewhere uh, going forward. That was just a weird play that Mike Shen was Mr. Awareness on the spot as he was able to get that block. Of course, Mason Millman <clears throat> um, also had a good block in front as well as uh, McFadden, who it looked like Fads got his stick on it as... Uh, Nagel was saying when it went across to Nick Master, somehow that puck stayed out of the net. So there was very tenuous, stressful plays in this game that the team stepped up big and was able to get blocked, which is huge to see going forward. And that's why in conclusion in this video, after winning 3-2, showing perseverance, after not going, being able to go for the empty net and, and be successful, the Royals played their best game in the second game, winning 3-0, getting a shutout for Logan Flodell after they wanted the shutout for him in the first game. Then they lost 5-4 in a battle that wasn't the best game from Flo that I think he'll openly admit he wasn't controlling his rebounds the best up there in Portland, Maine. And then they got shut out 4 nothing in an overall weird game because they got shut out 4 nothing, but but did have a good amount of chances. It's just Callum Booth was making the saves uh, like a brick wall again. And then in a goalie duel, we had back-to-back -back goalie duels in this series, 3-2. The Royals were able to win because of that aforementioned pass from Sonia to Ebbing. And then they win 2-1 to one in the clincher. A thriller on home ice. The Royals roar on with a thrilling 2-1 to one win as they are able to get the win. Again, thanks to the great play of Pritchard out there, who then got knocked. Thankfully, was able to come back into the game as he got knocked and went down the tunnel. Hopefully, Patrick McNally is also okay as Cockrell was injured in the middle of the series, hasn't played since. McNally was injured in this game, didn't come back in. J.D. Greenway didn't come back in for them, which is something to watch for P. Bruins fans since he was up there, so now they're not going to have him as a depth defenseman. 
And then something to watch <clears throat> for also Calder Cup playoff fans. And I'll watch that even when our Lehigh Valley Phantoms aren't in if you're also Lehigh fans. Um, Callum Booth is definitely someone to potentially watch. I don't know if he already did go back up. I didn't look at the transaction while before this video, but could go back up to be the third goaltender with the P Bruins because that's basically what he was doing and doing a good job at doing behind Grossnick there and Kaiser. But this has been a quick video recapping the thrilling win and the thrilling series win for our Reading Royals as they roar on as tonight at 5.30, the trois Rivier Lions take on the Newfoundland Growlers. Whoever wins that game is going to be your opponent. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe. Please subscribe down below or up above with the East Jews widget to keep the channel growing to the goal of 250 or more by the start of June. Peace out, everybody.